Hello and welcome to this PU Magazine webinar in which we will take the pulse of the markets right across the EMEA region with a focus on smart application trends in tech and home storage at their core. My name is Maria Maish, an editor at PU Magazine Global, and joining me today in the moderation of this webinar is my dear colleague, Tristan Reiner. Thanks, Maria, and hello to everyone. Coming up, a unique program, two panels, presentations, and of course, question and answers throughout. We'll first host a fireside conversation with Goodwee and Longi, and later a wide-ranging panel discussion crossing international solar markets with distributors from across EMEA joining us to talk technology, demand, challenges, and offer some fresh perspective on the residential market. But first, a little housekeeping, followed by some data points to warm you up for the sessions to come. Maria. So we want you to get involved today. So please don't hesitate to send through your questions and your comments and join the discussion. We'll endeavor to get to as many of them as possible and feed them into the discussion and at the end of each of our program segments. Watch out for a poll as well, which uh, you can participate in. And before you ask, the slides uh, you'll see will be available afterwards and all registrants for today's webinar will be receiving an email from the Big Marker webinar portal with a link to the recording, which you can further share with your friends and colleagues. And of course, the PU Magazine webinar team is standing by to answer any questions you might have about the Big Marker platform or any other administrative matter. Yeah, and uh, on behalf of Maria and myself, uh, PV Magazine and the other panelists, uh, just a serious note for a second, we want to be upfront. Uh, we note the topic of the war in Ukraine will likely emerge for its impacts on solar, commodity prices, supply chain and so on. It's of course a sensitive and important issue and we hope for better days soon. The topics are related as we head back into our session, uh, so we'll do our best to, to keep things moving. So, Maria, energy independence. Uh, the residential battery storage market is tipped to continue growth, and we have a range of data to commence the conversation today and give you a basis as we move forward through the afternoon's talks. Maria, to the data and a few brief slides coming up. Indeed, even uh, before Russia invaded Ukraine, energy independence and decarbonization were goals for the decades, for the next decades. Batteries for the home have shown households can maximize consumption of self-generated power and where solar starts, the doors for other technologies in the home open up. So let's have a brief look at market data. Uh, in Germany last year, households installing premiums solar and storage systems benefited from an LCOE of 12.2 euro cents per kilowatt hour, uh, which was nearly one third of the average electricity price at the time. With that in mind, solar plus storage um, is becoming a default offering in an increasing number of markets. In Germany, according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, over a half of new residential solar systems are now being built with storage. And in Switzerland, this number stands at around 15%. Yes, Maria, the forecast for residential solar and storage in Europe is pretty bright, uh, with the home battery fleet set to grow over 400%. From around 3 gigawatts, uh, gigawatt hours installed storage capacity in 2020 to uh, almost 13 gigawatt hours installed by 2025, according to Solar Power Europe. Uh, of that number, Germany accounts for 70% of home batteries installed in recent years, and the trend is towards ever bigger capacities. Uh, Policy and market factors across Europe, including incentives and disincentives, such as net metering in the Netherlands and Belgium, all have their effects as well. Yeah, and meanwhile, all dependent markets have a strong in, uh, incentive in, in the Middle East, have a strong incentive to diversify their economies and have all set ambitious renewable energy goals. Uh, if they are to be realized, the region will have to deploy more than 50 gigawatt of solar PV by 2030 uh, with Middle East but meanwhile, Middle East does lag behind other re uh, regions in the world when it comes to battery storage rollout. One of the factors, at least in the earlier years, were concerns around uh, the impact of high temperatures and humidity on the systems. But one positive change uh, which is um, coming up uh, are some new regulations that will likely expand allowances for behind the meter storage in association with the, uh, time of day tariffs, in particular in the United uh, Arab Emirates, as well as some utility scale tenders, uh, tenders mandating a specific size of storage. Yes, that's right. And touching on Africa as well, an enormous continent, uh, we see batteries being deployed as the central piece in energy systems serving remote regions with little or no grid, grid coverage. This is at utility scale. Much of the storage is in hydro as well. 
Uh, small scale will benefit from lower price batteries in the future, while uh, South Africa is a rapidly growing market as one bright spot in the enormous continent. So the battery markets in the MEA region are still in their nascent stage and further insights into how they grow will be part of our discussion today. Finally, onto the data, uh, lithium ion batteries have increased by around 10 to 20% in cost recently, uh, with current co commodity price booms unlikely to cause anything but further increases in the short term. Analysts at IHS Market projected a rise in stationary storage projects over the medium term of around 3 to 5%, but with no dent to the growth outlook despite that, uh, uh, leaving us with uh, a bigger uh, market to come. Um, and yes, Maria, sorry. Yeah, that's it from our side. And without further ado, let's get things underway by introducing our webinar partner today. Headquartered in China, Goodwe has a comprehensive offering across solar and energy storage, including hybrid inverters and battery systems. In 2020, only 10 years after its launch, Goodwe earned the title of the leading supplier globally of hybrid inverters from Wood McKinsey with over 15% market share. To date, it has delivered more than 23 gigawatts of inverter capacity around the world. With its recent rebrand as a smart energy innovator, Goodwe has brought out its high-tech identity. And representing Goodwe here today and the first one of our excellent speakers to join us on stage is, is Thomas Herring, Managing Director of a Region. Thomas himself launched Goodwe in the European market in 2018. He has 25 years of versatile experience in sales, marketing and business development, working in fast-growing and highly dynamic technical markets such as solar, PV, electric technical products and wireless communications. Thomas, I'm delighted to welcome you to the stage and we'll pass the floor over to you. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Uh, thanks, thanks for the introduction. Um, Tristan mentioned it uh, in the beginning. It's actually quite difficult um, to behave normal these days, uh, like nothing happened in the world, especially when you see every evening um, the pictures in the news, which are completely uh, frustrating and terrifying. But uh, even under this environment, I still wish you a good day and a welcome also on behalf of Kutri to this um, to the webinar today. The focus of the of this webinar is uh, home markets and storage systems. The idea that we had here in the beginning is to look at different market and how they have how they change in the coming in the coming years or in the, in the near future or how they have maybe changed already in the in the, in the, in the past and what we can learn from these changes and how we can benefit from, from these changes in the past. So we have also, I'm very glad we have some of our major distribution partners here with us, uh, which is um, Memodo, which is an international company, but originally based in Germany. And we have VP Solar, international company, but also based in Italy. Natec, originally coming from the Netherlands, but also with an international footprint in Europe. And Rubicon, who is also active in uh, in Europe, but has the origin in South Africa. So also thank you very much to all of these four partners to joining us today. And we will look at different markets together with them. Um, the residential markets are very dynamic and can change instantly. Uh, this can be, has to do with fit, fit, fit uh, changes, fee and tariff changes, net metering changes, subsidies and storage, uh, legal requirements, energy prices, uh, a very good example here is Italy, but we have seen tremendous change from 2020 to 2021. And even this year, in 2022, we also expect a major change in market dynamics in Italy. Another market which we expect to change quite soon in a different uh, scenario is Poland, which is at the moment pretty much an on-grid uh, string market. And we expect this to become a storage market in the very near future. So the trend is clear. There's always one way also that it goes from on grid to storage and never goes back. But I think this is uh, um, something we can see in, in all of the EMEA markets. The markets we want to discuss today a little bit closer is Germany, um, Italy, Belgium, uh, and South Africa. We have all the right partners here with us today, but we also will look obviously to the other markets. Uh, what we have, I think here, out and the audience today is mainly consists of installers and distributors. And I think we should 
we would like to lead a discussion in a way to show you how can benefit and take advantage from these market changes. And at first, it's very important, I think, for you to choose the right business partners and the international suppliers, because only if you would choose the right partners, they can help you to react fast to these changes. They give you the right information, the right solutions, and products and, and supply, especially these days as well, supply into the markets. And on top, I'm representing Goodwe here as Managing Director for EMEA. Um, I'd like to also show you today how Goodwe as a true one-stop shop, particularly for storage uh, solutions, can be helping you to fulfill your business targets in, in your markets. So having said this, thanks for the, for the, for the chance to introduce, uh, have for the introduction, and I uh, give back to Maria or Tristan. Yes, thank you, Thomas. I really appreciate that introduction and I uh, appreciate your words as well. So, well said. Um, now we move on to our first panel, panel of the day. Um, as you can see there, we unfortunately had two planned speakers joining us for a little fireside chat to discuss residential storage and solar modules. Unfortunately, Jason Yan from Longi was unable to join us and he offers his apologies. Um, we had a short chat planned, um, but we'll proceed with a smaller chat with uh, Ali Bawatur. Um, Ali, if you can turn on your camera to join in. Um, so Ali Bawatur, the technical director for EMEA at Goodwe. Um, Ali graduated from the University of Stuttgart, working and living across four continents. His combination of a solid technical background and a holistic business understanding as Goodby's technical director brings drives to his organizations by building the link between technology and customers. And Maria, uh, maybe you could just offer a few words introducing Jason and Longi. Um, again, he offers his apologies for being unable to join today, uh, but just, just an idea of uh, what he was going to bring to the table today. Uh, yes, we are, we are sorry that Jason wasn't able to join today. Uh, Jason spent six years in the photovoltaic R&D department with uh, new materials and products development, accumulating rich knowledge about uh, PV products, including the detailed process of the whole PV chain from raw material materials to system analysis. Jason then took a turn to product marketing manager uh, with an in-depth understanding of trends, uh, product advantages and disadvantages, and understands products uh, most attract uh, how how to make products attractive to the customers and why. Um, yeah, so back to you and Ali for the chat now. Yeah, thanks, uh, Maria. So, Ali, uh, if you're there, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm here. Perfect. Let's get let's Hello, get into our afternoon. fireside. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. Let's get into this uh, fireside chat. Um, obviously, uh, with batteries now com more common for solar owners, Jason said a few words to us before this about uh, PV modules regarding power efficiency and cell technology. We can't really speak to exactly what's happening, but Longi was looking at uh, Topcon as a future technology uh, for their solar modules, um, with the trend of the industry being uh, higher power modules and increased, increased efficiency as well. So, Ali, how does that play into what you're doing um, at Goodwe, and how closely do you work with partners like Longi on uh, on your roadmaps? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tristan, for the for the introduction. And um, well, basically, panels, solar panels, and inverters are the main components, uh, plus the battery, of course, in the whole system. And everything needs to interact together for an overall system that works perfectly for 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 the user. And we see a strong trend from the solar panel manufacturers, of course, to improve um, efficiency, to increase the outputs of the panels with the ultimate target, of course, to, to, to have more capacity installed in smaller surfaces, to reduce costs and so on. And what we see in the market are, the trend is the same towards higher power for sure, but also we see different manufacturers, panel manufacturers uh, following different um, strategies. And uh, we had Longi here, and uh, we know that their approach and their strategy from what we uh, know in, in our cooperation with, with, with them is that they are one of the manufacturers that are focusing on rather increasing the efficiency uh, while keeping uh, relatively similar uh, solar cell sizes, um, while other manufacturers are going towards uh, larger solar cell size. And solar cell size increasing from 182 millimeter going up to 110 millimeter. And uh, this is something that comes 
with uh, with uh, of course with benefits for sure i mean increasing the power means uh, it's an opportunity for the users for the installations to have more power installed on the same surface same roof surface if we are talking about um, about residential installations um, it comes out with larger size of solar panels which could be also for residential installations also a challenge to fit large size panels um, but Overall, this also leads to us on the inverter and the energy storage size that we have more power available to, 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 to store and to convert on one, one hand. Um, but also on the other hand, um, we see the currents that are coming from the solar panels are increasing. And right. this is the main challenge. I mean, this is, this is the main challenge that we see in, 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 um, for an inverter because that's what requires the inverter to be, to be able to, to, to deal with is uh, high currents. Yeah, so we've seen we've seen an increase in currents from uh, the low uh, teens of, of amps mm -hmm. up to somewhere around eighteen amps now, I believe, and certainly that's that's across Goodwe's roadmap uh, to come. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, we we used to have panels that are bringing, uh, as we see here, eight oh, to yeah, eleven yes, amps. Perfect. Yeah, um, eleven to eleven amps per on on, on one DC string. Um, this was fine for 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 most of the inversions in the past, but now going towards 13, 14, 15 amps, and yeah, we 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 started with larger uh, scale products for utility scale, for commercial scale, by upgrading all of the inverters to uh, be able to to deal with the higher uh, currents, um, and now it's also there for the for the residential for the residential market and uh, i think the trends there uh, this is one of the major trends that we also would like to discuss today um, that is partially driven by this high output power of the panels um, but also due to other reasons that there is more and more power now available and uh, uh, being able to 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 be installed on the same roof surfaces that we had in the past yeah, sure. I guess that sort of leads us towards um, combining building integrated uh, PV uh, with battery storage systems. Um, I think there's a few topics we could discuss there in terms of how good we might manage, um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, potentially greater uh, uh, generation of power um, into the inverter sizes, but as well as uh, the challenges involved with, um, with both retrofitting houses with um, BIPV and uh new installations with bipv uh, any thoughts yeah sure i mean it's it's uh bipv market is, an, is is a very interesting one because it's it's been and it's still a niche market um pv is a retrofit market for, certainly i mean that's that's the that's the mainstream um but keeping the thought that no in many countries every new house Either by 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 incentives, by regulate even regulation, certain countries uh, like we're seeing, for example, in Germany right now, certain regions imposing um, solar power on on, on new buildings. Um, that uh, and and even from the economic point of view, that it makes just simply makes sense for new builds to integrate solar from the beginning. Um, this is opening up uh, room for, for building integrated PV because it also brings practical advantages, plus also aesthetic advantages by uh, using uh, seamless integration of PV into the into PV panels into, into the building. So that's also certainly an interesting trend to, to, to observe over the coming years. And us as Goodwe, we are also... Um, yeah, bringing up new, uh, smart, and, and and also interesting solutions for the market. Um, so I just say to the audience here, stay tuned for for this BIPV part because good we uh, will be uh, uh, driving this market as well. Yeah, look, and and before we get into your your presentation, um, mm -hmm. I guess this is a chance for me to say, okay, so you have uh, eighteen amp to twenty amp uh, inverters coming soon. Um, what's the development process like within Goodwe um, as you as you create new products, test them, and then get them out to the market, uh, what's the sort of timeline um, here? And is there anything that our consumers and those of our peers joining us today uh, might be interested in from your side? Sure. I mean, we, we certainly have to adapt to the high pace in the market. Sure. I mean, the trends are very quick. Um, and that's, that's, that's the importance of having a, of investing in R&D um, resources. 
um, on one hand to be able to develop and, and test and uh, release new products, but also on the other hand in doing it in a, in, in a smart way and a platform technologies that are uh, in a modular concept and that's what we um, follow um, that allow us to um, step by step also adapt parts of the inverter to the to the to, to this new developments. Um, so for instance, I mean to release new inverters that are able to deal with this high power uh, solar panels, um, we're not necessarily developing new inverters from scratch, but we are taking existing platforms and, and upgrading them um, thanks to a uh, modular technology um, that, that we follow there and that help us to, 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 to keep pace and launch new products within a uh, few months while the process of developing uh, a fully new inverter just for the audience if, just to just to give an indication um developing a new inverter and certifying for grid requirements and so on is a process that might take actually a few years so we see a lot of uh, a lot of products or a lot of companies also taking two years uh, or around two years to get a product developed uh, tested and also certified for the markets so that's what we are trying to speed up by basing on existing platforms yeah, right. That is interesting. That's I think that's a valuable little bit of insight there. Um, certainly, when we we see you at trade shows, we see the latest uh, uh, inverters and tools um, coming on board, and then it's sometimes a little bit of a delay. And so, explaining why what we see at a trade show versus when we can buy it uh, for our homes and so on uh, can be interesting. So, um, thank you sure. for that, um, mm -hmm. Ali. I think uh, I think what we might do is um, end this panel just a tiny bit early, and we'll let you. Uh, get into your presentation um, if you're ready for that and sure. uh, we'll um, yeah you remain on camera I'll jump off and um, we'll see you at the end of your presentation yeah sure sure thank you thank you yeah. and uh, yeah I will be pleased to 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 talk to our uh, guests today uh, um, about the smart energy innovation and the market trends that we're seeing in the EMEA region so here we're looking into various markets and in, in, in trends um, and certainly we've seen from you, Tristan and Maria, that the storage market is growing uh, yeah, exponentially and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, now becoming the mainstream anyway. Um, here we're also sharing some numbers from Mood McKinsey um, that are highlighting this growth. Um, certainly there are regions in, in, in the globe like US and China that are dominant in terms of installed capacity, um, especially because of uh, the deployment of large-scale projects in utility scale. Um, we see in our region, the EMEA region, that is significantly growing in residential and commercial applications. Um, and this is due to, 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 to storage and PV becoming on top of the political agenda, especially on these distributed small-scale uh, projects. And uh, this growth in uh, our EMEA region is coming with new trends and new use cases for PV and storage. Um, and this is what we would like today during today's presentation to share with you um, also as a trigger for uh, the um, discussion later on with our with our partners. So we see new cases of PV and storage, um, we talked about PV and building materials being uh, you know, uh, integrated as a as a upcoming um, um, interesting market. Integrating PV with storage, with uh, EV charging, heat pumps. Um, so this is the integration of all um, electricity, mobility, and uh, heat um, uh, technologies um, into one ecosystem is one major trend. Uh, plus PV and uh, being able to manage the home loads and to uh, looking into smart home applications. So these are um, the main three um, uh, new use cases that, that, that we are seeing and during the presentation today. So we'll be sharing uh, with you some examples. Um, so on our side, on Goodwill's side, what we are um, basically proposing and offering to the market on the residential side um, as we talked, the BIPV, so the building integrated uh, PV, the inverters, batteries, that are two things that the market knows us best uh, for. Um, but we're also uh, bringing EV charging solutions, um, home kit solutions that are able to manage uh, smart home applications, plus the monitoring and maintenance applications. And uh, so all of this, if we now concretely start looking into certain certain trends in the market, 
Um, we see one of them is clearly that the residential installations are trending to higher and to larger capacities. There are different drivers. I mean, no, no secret that uh, yeah, uh, electricity consumption is, is increasing due to the strength of um, electrifying um, household equipment, but also um, e-mobility and uh, heat pumps, increasing electricity costs. Uh, also not only taken the current given i mean we had the trend anyway of increasing electricity costs but the current geopolitical situation is not making the situation better unfortunately um, and this comes with also the large installation having a better cost ratio so which means the large installation is more competitive in the kilowatt hour in the electricity that it produces and this comes with policy changes that uh, drive in many countries toward larger installations if we take, for instance, Germany that uh, removed the cap of 10 kilowatt on residential installations, um, or also we see Italy that uh, has the eco bonus. I'm sure it's going to be a topic of, of, of discussion later. That also gives incentives for larger battery capacities. And um, all of this, um, let's say, macro um, drivers come together with technology drivers. We talked about the increasing PV uh, module power. Um, that uh, makes it possible to to install more uh, power and also the flexible inverter and storage portfolios that uh, for example us or that we are able to to offer and propose to the market and uh, we see you now typically residential installations going to the range of 15 uh, kilowatt peak or even higher up to 30 kilowatt peak and um, this is an application that uh, can be very flexibly served with a combination of hybrid inverters and uh, PV inverters uh, from from our um, offer and um, also get coming to the next um, step um, is the new large hybrid solutions uh, that we are um, developing and bringing also to the markets with hybrid inverters going up to 30 kilowatts. Another trend is for sure the integration of PV storage, um, uh, electromobility, so EV and heat pumps, um, inverters control smart grid ready heat pumps, they also control EV chargers, uh, this is integration that, that can go through uh, dry contact, but can also go through a, a smart communication uh, with Modbus protocols. And what we see here as, an, as a very important um, factor for the users is the seamless integration of these components. So a seamless control and also the seamless monitoring of uh, all of these components in one platform that makes the customer uh, experience and the journey of the user with uh, all of this different uh, equipment very seamless and very uh, very easy to, to 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 monitor and there it comes also the importance of having uh, one-stop shop solutions that uh, integrate all of this together and uh, offers the consolidated um, platforms for monitoring and control but also consolidated support and service Backup power. Um, Tristan and Maria talked earlier about South Africa and the load shedding. Um, certainly, that's a main driver in our region for um, installations with backup power. But interestingly, this is not the only one. And not only in regions where the grids are weak, we see demand for backup power. Interestingly, also in, in, in Europe and in countries with very stable grid, um, there is the aspiration and the emotional needs of um, users to become independent from the energetic point of view. And uh, what we see in our experience in the market that integrated solutions um, that serve the self-consumption um, while uh, in a seamless integrated way, um, they offer a backup solution um, like we have in all our storage inverters um, gives the user an additional use that is anyway there and gives an additional motivation for 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 the for the for the customers to decide and to deploy uh, solar and storage on their on their uh, roofs or on their homes um solutions that come with the ups level switching time of less than 10 milliseconds for instance and uh, that makes it uh, very attractive for for users that not only look for optimizing their electricity bills but also for having um, yeah, a secure supply and a backup uh, power for, for, their, uh, for their homes. 
another very interesting trend, and this is, in my opinion, yeah, what requires the highest flexibility or what also uses the flexibility of our of our residential technologies. Uh, residential technologies are decentralized, very small scale, but combining all of them together um, brings very interesting uh, new use cases, uh, such as the virtual power plants. Um, the virtual power plants consists of different um, um, uh, installations that are um, in, in different locations. You see here in the, f in the, in the, in the photo one example of, of, uh, of installation that we had in the U.S. in Hawaii. Here it's just one same community, but this could be also, I mean, one same geographic community, but this can be also geographically in totally different uh, locations and merging all of these power plants small power plants together to a bigger one and having them um, communicating um, through uh, an energy management system that is linked to the inverters or also remotely via cloud technology such an API. And um, when there are the proper um, policies and the suitable policies in the country, so we see, for example, Italy um, or Germany, where we all have uh, use cases here already in place, and that we are able to deploy um, such a uh, use case. Um, and I would like also to, sh to share a very interesting one um, that we uh, experienced, not in our region, but in Australia, that even this type of residential um, virtual power plants can be used to provide services of frequency control to the utility companies um, by uh, helping stabilizing the grid, um, not just simply by every power plant separately, but as a whole virtual power plant. So these are also very interesting trends um, that can further drive uh, the deployment of, uh, of solar and storage. Um, commercial installations, um, besides the residential, are a very strong uh, market segment, um, which has been in the past not very dominant, but which is now getting uh, more prominence and uh, also having an increasing added value to the commercial customers. There are many drivers. Of course, this have consumption of PV car electricity to reduce the electricity bill. Um, but this comes with a challenge because the, the electricity price per kilowatt hour for commercial customers in many countries tend to be to be quite competitive um, and makes it uh, challenging for PV and storage to compete. Um, but if we add other um, other functions such as peak shaving of expensive power supplies of the power peaks or the backup power, this adds additional benefits for the for the commercial users that go beyond the simple self-consumption. And what you see here on this graph um, is, a, is an example of a daily load curve in a small factory. See here too, this red line is a two, two, two peaks. Uh, when they exceed a certain threshold, um, the user would be paying for the power. And uh, what we can deploy uh, with PV and storage uh, solutions is to cut these peaks, um, so to reserve the battery capacity for these peaks, but also to um, also reserve capacity for 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 blackouts uh, in case they happen. And we see a lot of um, a lot of businesses that are highly interested in securing uh, their their power supply, even if the grid is stable. But we see also tourism or hotel applications, remote areas that uh, strongly look for this type of applications. So what is needed is um, flexible uh, inverter and storage solutions that are able to um, serve these different uh, needs of the commercial customer. And we would like to share with you here two practical examples of, of installations that we serve on a, almost a daily basis. Um, if we look here on the left side, uh, this is the typical 100 kilowatt uh, peak installation in Germany. So the Germans here might be aware of the limit of 100 kilowatt peak uh, for, for, for certain installations. Beyond that, things become a little more complicated. So there is a market segment up to 100 kilowatt peak. And um, this is um, actually perfect for small um, small companies, for relatively small commercial rooftops, where we can fit an 80 kilowatt inverter able to produce 88 kilowatts. Um, 
and combine it with a combination of flexible storage inverters that we can run in parallel um, and connect up to 660 kilowatt hour of lithium battery. And and, and this flexible com combination brings an, uh, an interesting solution for, for the market, uh, in this case, in the German market, just as, as an example, um, that with the flexible portfolio um, of solutions, it's able to match the needs of uh, each, uh, every specific market. And on the right side um, is also a new solution. So we're driving uh, the integration of the of the uh, inverter and the storage um, by going into new hybrid inverters, 50 kilowatt, and we are also developing a higher power um, inverters that will have a very nice beauty for the users by combining all of the self-consumption backup and peak shaving um, solutions in, in one device. And... Um, for instance, by offering a powerful backup um, of uh, 50 kilowatts, um, it becomes possible also to secure the supply for a whole uh, for a whole building. Right. So, I mean, I've been talking about different trends. Um, our audience, if somebody is interested in, in looking into more details and knowing more about the solutions and the technicalities maybe behind them and, and also the detailed application, um, you're welcome to join us in different uh, webinars or to join our installer program, Goodwill Plus, where there we are... Um, uh, give you next to the to to, to the solution introduction um, we give you also some further benefits such an automatic warranty extension and some other uh, benefits and and the support um, but we look forward also to to uh, yeah questions from from the audience and uh, to the discussion uh, that we going to have uh, over the coming uh, part of this webinar Thank you, Ali. That was wonderfully informative, especially for our installers in the audience. Um, for those of you who might have joined late, uh, this was Ali Botour, Technical Director uh, of IMEA at Goodwe, who just showcased the versatility of home batteries and associated technologies. And as we prepare for our wide-ranging panel discussion today, we would like to hear from you uh, on smart energy integration and the use of PV and storage at the home. We know that you're joining us today from around the world, so you may well have your respective regions in mind when answering. Uh, Tristan, to our pool, uh, what do we have? Yep, okay, Maria, and uh, I'll get Ali to stay on with us as we get answers. And Thomas, if you want to come back on stage as well to discuss. So our poll, as you can see here, um, please participate uh, and put in your answer. Uh, in which of the following segments do you see the greatest potential for the home market? PV plus building material and building uh, integrated PV, PV storage, EV charger and heat pump altogether, or PV plus home load management? please use the poll sitting there um, alongside our video to answer. And um, Ali, as, uh, those, uh, as those results are coming in, um, yep. we just had a question from the audience um, regarding uh, um, PV plus EVs. Um, and if you're seeing uh, any developments in EV uh, batteries being used in Second Life's as a uh, home storage solution. Very good and interesting use case as well. Um, so thanks for the participant who raised this point. Um, certainly, I mean, Second Life uh, batteries, we see them in, in a small scale being used, and but already going beyond uh, simply the R&D stage, but also going into real manufacturing. And actually, we partner with, um, with one of our partners, System Integrators here in Germany, interestingly, is also... Um, looking into um, combining this, uh, this Second Life batteries coming from, from EVs um, and integrating them into simplified uh, container solutions and combining them with uh, one of our inverters and offering them as a lease model. Um, so this is uh, certainly opening up um, new use uh, for 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 storage in the commercial side could be also residential for sure, um, but I see strong um, yeah strong potential on the commercial side for this second life uh, EV batteries. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. Um, 
Okay, so the votes look like they're in. Um, thank you to everyone uh, for participating. We'd love to see it. Um, Maria, what do we see here? What are the results? Yeah, we see the strong lead of the PV storage EV charger heat pump synergy. So, Thomas, any surprises here? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. So, I mean, PV storage charging and the heat pump, I, th I don't think it's a trend anymore. It's beyond a trend. I think it's already reality. I mean, it's, a, it's the, what we're seeing today. And then if the, we believe that this is reality, then the load management is also just a matter of time because this is then also needed in order to manage <clears throat> all these energy uptakers. And uh, yeah, so for sure, that's probably the most important uh, the most um, um, important topic at the moment. The building material, I think we're talking here mainly about BIPV, building integrated PV and, and, and a similar. It's a bet, right? It's a bet. But if we believe, and I believe in this, that the photovoltaic energy is the most important energy source in the future globally, I believe this will be 100% also a trend in Europe and in the other regions because uh, it's just by definition, if PV will be used everywhere as a major source, then why not put it already integrated in the house? Why, why do make it more complex? Indeed, good point, yeah. So, okay. uh, yeah, should we move to yeah. our second panel of the day? Let's, let's do it, Maria. So up next is our second panel of the day. And I'd like to now introduce um, some panelists from across the world and invite them to the stage. So if you could all turn on your cameras and give the audience a wave when you're introduced. Uh, first up, we have Ricardo Frizzingheli. Ricardo, where are you? Turn your camera on. Don't worry, we'll get him there. Um, Ricardo let's, is developing new start. markets. Yeah, no worries. The, Ricardo is developing new markets for VP Solar, and his main activities are to analyze the market and competition, participate in international trade fairs, find new customers, manage existing customers by finding new business opportunities, identify channel development, and more. So, do we have Ricardo there yet? No, but we'll keep we'll keep moving on. Um, we also have Jerome Lux, country manager of Belgium Natec Sunergy. Jerome has been with Nitec Belgium for two years, and I hope I'm pronouncing Nitec right, um, and has been active in the energy sector for many more years before this. Jerome is responsible for exploring the storage market opportunities with the goal of making Nitec the market leader in Europe. So welcome to Jerome. Maria. Uh, welcome to uh, Tobias Wenlender as well, CEO of Memodo, Germany. Tobias is the CEO of Memodo, together with uh, Daniel Schmidt and Enrico Brandmeier. He has 12 years of experience working in the PV industry and is responsible for the entire purchasing process at Memodo and its daughter companies. He is located in South Germany in Bavaria. Hi, Tobias. And then uh, we have Nick Roche, Chief Product Officer from uh, Rubicon Energy South Africa. Nick has worked in various roles in the industrial automation and PV industries for over 20 years. He took on the role of branch manager when he opened the R Rubicon Cape Town office 11 years ago. And he uh, was then tasked with the responsibility of managing the Rubicon product portfolio and starting the, the product development division in the Chief Product Officer role in 2010. 19. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. So, with many of our industry friends, peers, customers, and colleagues on this session, and with lots of specialization in each of our own regions, to start this session, it's worth touching on each of your regions for around one to two minutes, and then perhaps Thomas uh, could, uh, could give us a summary of what we are seeing here. So, uh, so Jerun, first to you. Thank you. Um, I'm mainly responsible for the sales in Belgium. So uh, my experience was all about that. So what we saw last year was the integration of the uh, battery systems for the residential house owners. So it was the first year we started with this because of shifts in uh, regulation and also subsidies. So the trend we are seeing right now is that the uh, batteries are here to stay, uh, stay. And the systems we installed Last year are mainly uh, dumb battery systems, meaning that they are only being charged with the PV uh, production and only being discharged when the appliances need it. 
uh, the trend that we are seeing right now in Belgium is that we are searching for smart battery systems. And those systems are also being charged from the grid and discharged towards the grid when the grid prices are fluctuating. So uh, a lot of energy suppliers, uh, they have a dynamic tariff right now available. So uh, a day before you get um, which hour are the best times to purchase energy and the systems from the future um, know this and they calculate when they have to charge and discharge. So the, the business case of a storage uh, system will be more and more um, important in the future. Yes, good point, definitely. Um, let's turn the floor over to uh, Tobias in Germany. Thank you, Maria, and hi to you all, guys. So what we have in the German market is we have a storage market since many years now, I would say. We have been starting really early. It was coming more and more from 2015 on. But what we see in the last years, especially the last two, three years, is an increasing, dramatically increasing demand every year uh, from private household owners. Uh, what we have in, in German market and it goes away from because in the mind of the people was in the past always our PV make it still sense they were more on the feed-in tariff and this totally stopped so they all want to go to self-consumption to be independent and the main installations are always now uh, demanded on, on storage system so it's I would say nine from from ten inquiries are always with storage system it's it's really a, not big reasons why people don't want the storage system and it will increase so we have the new government in germany is so still uh, thinking about and talking about uh, new subsidies we will have in the german market who will also uh, give us a big boost again for for the, the pv with, with storage and also for for bigger installations what the goals we have for the, the, the pv uh, installations in the next years it will go the plan is from 23 on 24 on to go to 10 gigawatt uh, uh, in the german market and from 27 on the plan is to build 20 gigawatt just in the german market and so we have a lot to do all together i would say but we have big opportunities the next years and it will be very yeah nice nice outlook for the future uh, absolutely. Yeah, and a very dynamic one. Uh, so now let's hear from Nick in South Africa. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Maria. Thank you. Uh, yeah, our market is probably quite different to yours, but also very uh, far, growing very fast. We're seeing huge demand across the board um, from commercial through to, to residential. Um, the main drivers in our market are quite steeply rising energy costs. We're seeing that uh, coming through quite strongly now. Um, we're very much a self-consumption market, so our grid operators don't really support, uh, you know, feed-in tariffs very well or, or not in a way that is is very attractive. So uh, because of that, storage is, is an important part. The other uh, obvious driver is the grid stability. Our grid is not that stable. And um, because of that, we're pretty much uh, on the residential side, a 100% storage market, you know, grid tied, uh, just straightforward grid tied um, PV systems in the residential space are, I would say, close to zero. Um, so the market is, is obviously, that's why we do uh, very well with Goodwe because um, the hybrid inverters are quite popular here and it, it supports the, you know, the um, self-consumption and, and grid stability um, sales that we do yes very interesting and very um different drivers in place over there uh do we have ricardo joining um is he maybe with audio here at least uh seems not oh, okay not yet uh still working on it no problem uh so we heard about different things of uh, different drivers in place in different markets. So Germany, a very dynamic one, as um, uh, Tobias said, nine out of 10 inquiries are uh, with uh, for PV with storage, uh, different, uh, different, totally different developments in uh, South Africa, of course, not only uh, uh, there, also uh, Belgium, but um, 
maybe uh, Thomas, uh, can, could you give us a summary of what we are seeing and what the di dynamics uh, are at the moment and what is, and how's the market changing? Yeah, I mean, you heard from, from these three different countries at the moment and the big challenge that you see in this uh, storage market and also especially for as a manufacturer of storage solutions and waters and also batteries is that all these markets have very different requirements that are very, very um, um, challenging in some aspects. So for example, um, Nick mentioned the um, uh, South African market and the needs there and our hybrid product there. One of the key elements in for South Africa is the UPS functionality, the uninterrupted power supply. So they're very fast switching into a, uh, into a battery system and the grid uh, falls out. And that is something which we deliver with products, but it's typically not a requirement in Europe because the grid usually doesn't drop um, as it is does in South Africa. So that so we see in 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 on Europe and South Africa and different markets very different products needs. Like in Italy, it's more a single phase market at the moment with low voltage products a lot. In in Central Europe, it's more three phase high voltage solutions that are that are re required more. So we, there's a, a a whole lot of different products that you have to supply and certify and make sure that they are stable and have a good quality. And this is the big challenge that we see right now. But what's interesting to say is that with all of these partners you have here today on the panel, we grew the market share tremendously over the last two years, tremendously actually. And the major reason, reason is because all these mar markets underwent significant changes over the last years. And we were able to, to cope with these changes because we had the portfolio. And I think that is what I, coming back to in the beginning, it's just important who you work with uh, because the, uh, um, if you have strong partners at your side, you uh, you mitigate the risk of a change of a market, and you actually win on this market. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, Nick was joking in a call we had before this session that he used to have less gray hair. So quite a lot of dynamics and changes and exactly uh, highlighting the importance of having the right partners. Uh, so many markets uh, are set uh, to see a surge in uh, retrofitted batteries as solar feed-in tariffs began to begin to expire. As uh, Tobias mentioned, in Germany, we had uh, this uh, uh, the first solar arrays that benefited from the 20-year fit, uh, fit introduced by them back in 2000, uh, and they are beginning to expire. So uh, people are now searching to maximize the, their self-consumption. But of course, uh, we also have this uh, big solar and st storage becoming a default offering. So um, to each one of you, uh, what trends do you see uh, here? Uh, are there more, is there more demand for retrofits? Is there more demand for uh, a PV plus storage coupled as, as an, uh, an a single offering. So over to Jeroen, please. For us, it's both. So uh, we had a lot of all, almost 10 years of uh, PV installations are being installed and they were all installed without uh, um, batteries and all those systems are becoming more and more uh, independent on uh, net metering. So therefore the old systems all have to be upgraded with it, uh, for with, with a battery system. And there, the retrofit inverter is ideal. So that market is also big for Belgium, but every new installation has to be integrated directly with the, with the battery system. So therefore, hybrid is also interesting. So, and that's the good way, thing with Goodwe that they can provide both, and they're strong in both of those two fields. So um, yeah, we see a, a huge trend in the, the hybrid as well as the retrofit inverters. Uh, yes. Uh... And Ricardo, is that you? <laughs> you joined in the meantime? Hello? Is Ricardo online? Uh, no, I'm so sorry. Uh, so uh, yes, as I mentioned, Nick, over to you. Uh, can you tell us something about the developments in South Africa? Yeah, our market is, is definitely changing. Uh, the demand is, is definitely very strong and very steep. Um, in our market, I think the, the main uh, sort of changes at the moment is as it matures, you know, we, we're a few years behind uh, Europe and, and the, 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 let's say the, the level of understanding of PV was a little different for, for some time. And, and now uh, we're starting to catch up 
uh, so the, the market requires a little bit more from the equipment, a slightly higher grade. Um, they're more interested in things like warranties and, and um, the credibility of the manufacturers behind the equipment, whereas that was a little different a few years ago. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so that, that change, of course, trickles through to us and, and um, our customers are asking for, for good, reliable, solid equipment. Um, and and the end customers are smarter about what they want and, and more, um, let's say, firm about what they want, meaning that from our side, we need to make sure that we're onboarding the right grades of equipment with the right partners uh, and things like that. Yeah, uh, that's that's a good point as well. Uh, so, but are you, uh, what are you seeing in terms of demand from, um, uh, from customers? Are they asking uh, for more complete packages? Like they want to have uh, the whole range of wall box, uh, combination of technology. So everything that Ali talked about in his presentation, um, or is it like more single product? Uh, Tobias, over to you in Germany. Uh, so for us, it is like uh, you asked before, we will get or uh, we're seeing a slightly uh, increase of the retrofit market, but it's still main driver of, of the, the market are new installations and therefore the people looking for a whole package. So it's coming more and more, the, the, the EV uh, is, is coming really in the market. So we had also a subsidy last year for, for wall box installations. And there it was really the request of all customers to get a new PV installations that want to also um, the wall box for, for, the, for the EV charging. And also what Ali showed before, the connection with the heat pumps comes more and more, especially in the, in the last weeks, we're seeing more that people who planning already uh, a gas heating that say now switched and say, no, I don't want it anymore. Or also if they had um, an oil heating, so they all want switch immediately now to to a heat pump but we're seeing also it, it before that the demand is going more and more to heat pumps and the best thing and all the people are demand is they want one whole packaging so not every uh, manufacturer prepares this and so uh, Goodwill is for us also a very important partner because they're so getting more and more in this whole packaging thing and it, it's totally what we need for now and also for the future Yes, exactly. Uh, Jeroen, anything to add to that? Uh, how's the things look like in, in, in Belgium? Yeah, definitely the same uh, as in Germany. Uh, so the trend for heat pumps is very uh, steep right now. Uh, everybody wants to get rid of uh, their gas uh, consumption. And I think uh, important to this is that uh, Goodby will open its cooperation with uh, a different brands of uh, heat pumps because uh, I think uh, the supply rate, uh, because the demand is so high, that uh, you see some kind of trend that uh, uh, inverter companies also want to provide their own heat pump. But I don't think that will be sufficient for the demand uh, right now. Uh, as an example, Goodby provides also uh, different brands of uh, battery uh, to be connected to their inverters. And this is a very good thing because I think the, the chain of supply is not so strong. Uh, so the demand is way bigger than the supply. And if you are very flexible in the things you can add, uh, then you are, have a very strong brand. And I'm hoping that also Goodby provides an open source and a lot of cooperation with different brands of heat pumps. And I think uh, they yeah, then we have a very, very strong product. Yes, indeed. Uh, Nick, can we hear from you on this one? Sure. So our market is is a little bit behind Europe in that regard also. So electric vehicles are, are on very much on the rise here, but the market is still quite small right now. So we're definitely getting very strong demand for uh, EV integration, but it's more of a future looking uh, demand. Uh, there's a lot of early adopters and early players looking to to be prepared, let's say, for that. Uh, in terms of hot water, we have a slightly different market. Heat pumps do uh, definitely feature here. But a lot of the uh, hot water is generated um, just by normal sort of resistive or let's say traditional electric uh, hot water cylinders. Um, so that technology is definitely something that uh, interests the market, but but it's still quite early for for the full integrated package for for a couple of reasons. Uh, yes, that's a good point. Um, Ali, can we hear from you on this one? Uh, what is good with planning in terms of uh, heat pumps uh, and what's what's currently uh, the offer? Yeah, well, I mean, for for I mean, heat pumps have 
deploying heat pumps means that the PV installation will be larger as well because it consumes additional electricity. And this is a very interesting driver. So on, 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 on one hand, um, it is increasing uh, the PV market and the storage market in general. On the other hand, what is important for the users is the seamless control and the seamless uh, integration means that um, when the heat pump is scheduled to work, because the heat pump is typically relatively easy to schedule, also in terms of, of when it's working, um, that it's interacting with the, with the inverter um, that will uh, reserve a certain part of the electricity for, for the heat, heat pump or will activate it also when there is a surplus. So when we have during um, a daytime um, uh, um, a peak of PV production, that the inverter is able to activate the heat pump also on that time. And that's the type of, of, of integration that we look at with different manufacturers of heat pump that we have here, mainly in Europe. Yes, exactly. And like in uh, some, at the adoption of the technologies, it's also a question what comes first. So the chicken and egg situation in a conversation with the Norve uh, Norwegian auto industry player just recently for the sake of uh, one of our print articles, we found that EVs were driving solar adoption. So that uh, how is it like in your markets? Are you seeing a solar drive EV adoption or the other way around? And how does storage play into this? We see that uh, Ricardo uh, joined us in the meantime from Italy. So it might be good to integrate him uh, into the discussion. Hello, Ricardo. Hello. Um, it might be that his mic is, sorry. Okay, I will ask uh, the team in the, in the backstage to try to fix Ricardo's uh, audio if possible. And in the meantime, let's move to Germany and uh, hear it from Tobias. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> What we're seeing is a little bit uh, change in it. So we had always in the past the problem that people said, ah, I don't have a possibility to charge my car, so I will not uh, switch to, to electric. And also that the people have still in mind, I want to go like 500 kilometers. If I go to holiday, I need, I need a car who can drive a, a long range. But it's, it's changed now, the thinking. So it helps what I said before with the subsidy we had in, in the German market for uh, wall boxes uh, for the EV charger um, that people say, okay, one day I will have the car. So I, now maybe I start uh, with the, the EV charging uh, system right now. And there is now a changing. It also, as I said before, like you see, if you see in pricing, what is paying on the gas station at the moment, people, the last days especially say, okay, I should definitely change. And people are also switching their thinking in, in mind because how often do they really drive 500 kilometers in once? So if they go once a year holiday, so it's not a big deal, maybe after 300 kilometers to stop uh, with the whole family, go for a walk, get a coffee and go back on. So um, the, the, mind, the mindset is changing a lot and, and it is driven by not only from, from PV side or solar side, it's the, the total environment. And uh, I would say, where is the change in coming from? But what we're seeing a lot, and also not um, in business, also in my private uh, friends and, and family, that, that this mindset was changing a lot. And more and more people go minimum. Let's say, okay, we have two cars at home. We change one to, to electric car because we don't need that many kilometers. And this is a, a good thing if I have my own TV installation on the roof to charge it by my own with an intelligent uh, system who says, okay, I have, before I feed in uh, to the grid, I do, do the, the power in my car and be independent on this way. And it's an easy, a easy way for, for, the, for driving. Yes, um, good point. Um, uh, Jerome, would you like to chip in on this one? Uh, we see the same trend in Belgium, and the trend is led by mainly uh, uh, the regulation um, of company cars. So uh, in Belgium, uh, our government decided that uh, in the future, all company cars should be electric. Um, and this is a vast portion of every car um, driving around. So uh, that really pushes the EV market uh, and also the perception with uh, 
end user is that if he buys a combustion uh, car right now, in the future, he will not longer be able to sell it for a nice uh, pro um, uh, rest um, value because he thinks that his car has become too old and every car has to be electric in the future. So, And I think this will also drive the sale in PV because the demand of electricity will ramp up rapidly, uh, which is a good case for us. So uh, the demand in electricity will be way higher than uh, right now in uh, 2022. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Everything points to that. Uh, Ricardo, are you with us now? Can we? I still don't hear Ricardo. I'm so sorry about that, but we have some technical hitches. Um, okay, Nick, uh, you, uh, over to you. Um, would you like to comment on this one? Yeah, sure. So again, our, our local scenario is different. There's lots of yes. demand for a new demand, let's say, for EVs. So a lot of interest, a lot of, uh, we're working very closely. We have a, a dedicated department for our uh, e-mobility uh, customers. And uh, there's lots of demand to have PV with it because of the instability of the grid and storage. So many of the, the larger projects we're seeing are uh, have a requirement for, for charges with storage with PV, driven by a few things, the weakness of the grid for sure, um, but also the, the, the tariffs that we're seeing uh, support that now too. Um, Ali, can you can we hear from you on this one to wrap it up? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly, I mean, I, to wrap it up, I, I think certainly the, the EV, I mean, it's chicken and egg somehow, but in a positive, <laughs> it's a positive spiral, let's put it indeed, this way. Indeed, yeah. Um, so that the, the the demand on one side is driving the demand on the other one, and it's uh, it comes also with a challenge on the infrastructure. And I think that will require. Now we're talking about residential, and we when we talk about residential, also we tend to look at one family house and the type of uh, classical uh, family environment. But there is also the immobility for 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 commercial installations for. Um, also condominiums and uh, and uh, and larger um, residential um, areas where certainly also policies needs to adapt and to make things uh, more less complicated from the bureaucratic side i mean if i look for example at, at germany as a country but also on the other hand is the infrastructure challenge as well i mean all of the if we need to 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 have additional lines, uh, powerful lines that are able to support uh, the high load of uh, of EV and of uh, charging facilities. Uh, yes, and uh, we got some audience questions in the meantime. Uh, maybe over uh, to Thomas. Um, uh, is uh, uh, good we uh, uh, offering also uh, bidirectional charges? In the I, moment, the, the charge is something we will be bringing out. We have not launched this product. Uh, how it exactly will look like, we will show it in more detail in the Intersolar. Yeah, and I would like to you know, wait until Intersolar in order to come with the mm -hmm. specification then. It's a bit early to, to mention Yes, that. yes, sure. sure can I maybe one more, I would like to maybe say one more thought here regarding the Absolutely. EV charging, which maybe is an interesting idea as well, because we talked about different markets. Um, I lived some years in Arizona, in Phoenix, and Phoenix in summer is very hot. And when you go back to your parking lot in the evening from work and you don't didn't protect your car, you cannot even enter the car. It's so hot. So you need to protect your car. And everybody was looking for shaded parking. So I think there's a lot of potential in the market also for employers to put uh, um, PV car uh, shaded parks, car parks in, into into the parking lot of the of the of the um, office space where the cars park and offer this to the employees and maybe even for free because the energy that comes there for free on, on the car park and it's could be a very big benefit for uh, for for employers to the to their staff and and good stickiness for for people who hang on to the com company also also from the legal side to have car in the us this where it comes with carpool lane you can also have carpool lane on ev cars and things like this so there's a lot of a lot of um, potential from a legislation and from also from companies to to really push this this market into the next level. Absolutely, that's a, that's a great idea for sure, and uh, that's what we are expecting to see in future. 
Uh, okay, and um, uh, back to our uh, distributors. Um, so, um, are you seeing uh, customers target uh, full home backups or more advanced feature, uh, features less, such as uh, peak shaving, uh, time of use, um, uh, and uh, balancing demand? Um, so, over to uh, to BS in Germany. What are the main features that customers are asking for? Yeah, so you have to, have to see on which market you have in view because for residential, it's of course, we don't have really a peak shaving, but for the commercial sector, we will grow a lot in, in, in the next years because uh, the target, I say, is not achievable if only we have in the residential area installations. And what we will see from this year on, or we have it already in some uh, countries in, in Germany, is obligation for PV installation on, on, on bigger roofs. And also to the point what Thomas said, uh, we will get an obligation for PV carports uh, if we have more than 35 places for cars outside. So and therefore you need definitely kind of a peak shaving because if you want to prepare everyone with a, an EV charger on every station and then like say you have employees or you have customers like 40 or 50 and all together want to uh, plug in their electric car, you will have a problem because you don't have the electricity capacity at, at this point. Or you have a smart uh, charging system and then but every car maybe just get one kilowatt per hour would also not help a lot. So we definitely will need also on this obligation for, for, for PV installations for, for bigger roofs in the commercial sector, we will always in the future need also batteries for, for the peaks we have, not only if the peaks coming from some machines inside of, of, a, of a company, the peaks will always come with electric cars and the, the number will rise, will really, really rise in big numbers in the next years. And so if you, like imagine, you have like 100 employees and let just 80 of them come with electric car and all plug in around one, one hour or less the car you will have always the big peaks and you have the intelligent uh, system on that and yeah ali you had some yes oh, yeah i just thing. wanted i wanted to add something because also coming back to the question of the for me to i mean the this bi-directional charging but also the peak shaving the technology is there and that's what what also what we would like to convey as a message from from our side mm -hmm. so the bi-directional charging as technology is there we use it already for battery charging and for discharging and, and we're also able to use it in combination with with uh, electric vehicles what is missing is the 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 policy around it uh, what we call the v2g so the vehicle to grid uh, what is the legal framework for that so that's still not clear um, and as long as that's not clear, we're not yet able to really deploy the technology in the large scale. And similar also to the peak shaving. Peak shaving, as I was showing the presentation earlier today, we have the technology, so we're able also to deploy it. Um, it will be probably less complex than deploying the bi-directional charging for, for, for EVs. Um, um, but it will also come with more dynamic uh, electricity tariffs. And this is this is also trend to be observed with the upcoming policies and to be, as you mentioned, yeah, coming um, carports, EVs uh, being obliged, uh, increasing peaks. Definitely this will all come with change in the, in, the, in the policies of the utility companies, as an example. But the technology is there. Um, so we're able to serve it and we hope that the, both the infrastructure side and also the policy side um, is uh, keeping pace with us. Absolutely. Technology will always outstrip regulation, as we know. Uh, but uh, Jerome, perhaps your experience next? <clears throat> we see some uh, business cases already for a small uh, commercial size that, uh, which have a lot of employees that go uh, EV that there are um, business cases to employ uh, those uh, batteries to um, take on those uh, spikes in consumption uh, because for some reason they can't uh, upgrade their grid to the potential they need for their EV. And like Tobias uh, told us, yeah, then uh, every car has to be charged with a very slow amount and that's not something you want. Um, so we have some business cases already been sold and been integrated. So that is a trend we, we started and will Excel uh, for yeah a, a lot of years right now. Um, 
And also uh, capacity tariff is also being employed in Belgium. So those spikes you make on the grid uh, are also being charged in the future. So uh, there's also a new business case for batteries on top of the other business cases we already have. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And uh, back to Nick. Um, Nick, you said already full um, home backups and UPS um, uh, is what you're seeing. And um, there are uh, only early adopters of EVs uh, in South Africa. Uh, so uh, any anything to add to that? Yeah, no, full home backup is uh, very much a, a requirement. So that's the one use case. Uh, peak shaving is, is quite important, not so much on residential, but more on commercial. We have tariffs that support that uh, with capacity charges and, and uh, so on in place. So there's, there's already a market for that, but as I say, more commercial and, and larger scale. Um, and then on the EV front, for sure, as I said earlier, the storage will be very important for several reasons, also for capacity charging, well, capacity charge tariff. Um, or tariffs will, will definitely be it will be super important to to have that integrated for sure the the, the storage uh, maria just note you're on mute that's weird hello <laughs> yeah here i am back i've been told that uh, ricardo has uh, joined again I mean, I hope so. Okay. Is this working right now? Yeah, uh, finally. Yeah, really yeah. welcome, right finally. Uh, welcome, Ricardo. <laughs> thank you very much, Thomas. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a great pleasure. Sorry, guys, but uh, yeah, you know, sometimes the technology is not really going to help. You yeah, know, it'll but, never you know, be perfect. I changed the computer, I changed the everything. So, sorry, but I was listening to everybody, and uh, you said that many things were very smart. Thank you very much for your the information. I got it from you. Yeah, that's great. So maybe just uh, uh, discuss with you, Ricardo, what uh, you're seeing in Italy. Uh, so what are uh, consumers asking um, for? What are, what and is it like full home backups and also on the uh, CNI level, if you can uh, chip in yeah. on this one? Yeah, well, it's um, definitely the storage uh, uh, installation is a booming completely uh, in Italy from domestic. Uh, we saw uh, we're doubling and doubling the numbers of installation plus 280, 284% this, the, in 2021 in Italy, thanks of uh, the new law that is um, incentives for the storage market and all the combination with the different technology. Uh, absolutely. Um, now the 50% of the domestic installation is based on storage. Okay. Uh, usually the size of uh, the power is around uh, 10 kilowatt or 13 kilowatt of storage batteries. And I would say that more and more the small commercial and industrial systems are more and more asking for a solution to cut the peak, as uh, my colleague was telling before. And uh, because of that, because of the price of energy is increasing and uh, everybody would like to save energy and yeah, to try to save uh, for the car with the combination with the EV charging and all this market is completely booming right now. Yes, uh, thank you, Ricardo. So that was uh, a little bit on, it, on Italy. Um, and um, uh, Thomas, uh, I'm sure hearing from you on this one would be interesting. It's no secret the supply chains are constrained and obviously being a larger player has its own advantages. But can you speak to what the industry is seeing here? On the situation of supply chain, <clears throat> I think yes. this is a quite interesting question, I think, to everybody out there, but uh, I guess also to everybody here on the panel, <laughs> also listening very carefully now. Um, yeah, situation is really, um, I think I have to take it in, uh, I have to answer in, in two ways. One is the batteries, and the other one is the inverters. I think we Good one, yes. <laughs> uh, the situation, the batteries, is really dramatic, I have to say. There is always there's a very dynamic situation with supply and prices with respect to lithium and cells particular, but also BUS component of the battery. And this um, goes instantly overnight, basically. Um, so we also have to act and we act a couple of times lately on these changes because we had to. And honestly, I foresee that the market stays very volatile and very unpredictable, especially in terms of also supply, but mainly in terms of prices. 
for the balance of 2022. So here I really don't see any any relief, but I hope at least the price situation becomes in a stable situation, at least in the, from now. Um, in terms of inverters, it's a whole different scenario. Here we have this uh, big problem because coming from mainly from the semiconductors, mm -hmm. the shortage there that we see. I mean, we have also working with passive components like filters and capacitors, but it's mainly the semiconductors which drive an issue here. Um, and it's a so-called IGPTs, which are power transistors that we use a lot, not only, but they are really here in big need. Um, Goodwe is working here with the who is who of the semiconductor manufacturer, with the key players of Germany, of the USA and Japan. This has a good news and a bad news. The good news is that we have very high quality product. I think the best in the market that we can use for our products uh, because reliability of the product is a, is a very heavy value for us. The disadvantage is that all of the car manufacturers use the same, uh, the same semiconductor manufacturers. And you can see uh, when you order a new car now, very easily you have more than one year supply time for a car for a new car, and the reason is, is mainly the semiconductors in the car. So you can see the situation <clears throat> is also dramatic here. Um, what, um, and I, I believe it's not as dramatic as the batteries. I see over the course of 2022 some reliefs there. But the key point here is also because you cannot, uh, you cannot really uh, compromise in quality. I mean, in the, in the short term, you have high output, but in the midterm, it destroys your reputation and your brand. So you cannot do that. So the only thing we can do is we try to work the same way with our suppliers as we work with our customers in a very much partnership oriented way. I think our the companies here on this panel can agree that Goodwe is a very, has the DNA of partnership and we do the same with our suppliers. We have, we try to really partner strongly with these suppliers give a lot of transparency and very long forecast and long commitments. And with that, we try to be treated like a key account and like an old, maybe not like an automotive account because it's unrealistic to believe you're an automotive account, you're not an automotive account, you're an inverter manufacturer, it's a different value uh, chain here um, for them or different on the, on the food chain, a different value, but still as a key account and to make sure that we get good supply. And I think so far, when you look at our competitors, we have done not so bad. We are, I think we had also have trouble, but we're doing better with, than many of our competitors in the market. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, uh, absolutely. I would suggest we now move to our Q&A uh, part of the program. And I will uh, like to invite my colleague Tristan back on stage. Hello, hello. Thanks. I've been uh, listening and uh, taking note of all the audience questions. And Maria asked a couple of them as they came in. Um, a, lot of, a lot of general sort of questions, but um, some specific ones that I think might be interesting. Um, uh, to Ali, an audience question, do you see contradicting targets between maximizing uh, self-consumption and participating within uh, uh, VPPs, um, the virtual power plants that you mentioned trialing in Australia already? Sure, I mean, you've got I mean, you, you you have your 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 infrastructure. You can target 100% of using it for yourself, or you can also target to 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 uh, share it. And I think there is not. I mean, if if, if you're aiming at 100% low independence, then yes, um, then there is a contradiction for sure. But um, if you're aiming to share, and sharing here makes sense because. Uh, when you have uh, when you have an added uh, or an excess of, of of electricity, other people somewhere else uh, might be in uh, need for it, um, and that's that's basically the the yeah, the idea behind it. Um, so yes, I mean there is a contradiction because you would be giving something away, but also on the other hand, it opens a very interesting use case. Thanks for that. I hope that answers uh, the the audience question. Um, and uh, a sort of more specific one on uh, something particular. Um, does Goodwe plan to introduce firmware upgrades? We have a sort of particular question about a particular series for direct energy control. But generally speaking, Ali, perhaps again, or maybe Thomas, um, but let's go with Ali. Uh, if you could talk about firmware upgrades and software and how long the support is uh, for your inverters. 
Yeah, well, I mean, this is this is a very technical question. Sure, I mean, um, uh, inverters are. I mean, to put it into the context, inverters are smart devices. I mean, they are the heart of the system, as everyone knows here. And the software is basically the intelligence there. And and we we try to give incentives to our customers and to motivate them to have all inverters um, online. Um, and with uh, the inverters being online, we're able us remotely or our customers are also able to locally do this software or firmware upgrades um, to bring in new new functionalities. I mean, take an example, controlling a heat pump or controlling an EV charger. Um, so with the software upgrade, uh, we are able to, to, to upgrade existing installations with uh, this type of new features and certain conditions. So yes, definitely, yes, we do this and we, we encourage our customers and our installation partners also to to put the inverters online for that purpose. Thanks. I, I, I think that's a pretty good answer. Um, so, okay. An, inter an interesting question here for um, perhaps our distributors. Um, so I might go to Nick. Um, I guess, so the, the question is um, about self-consumption and demand response becoming popular. Um, do you, <laughs> it's an interesting one. Do, are the buyers mostly idealists or uh, are they purely talking about financial benefits um, as an important motivation. Uh, and of course, we're talking about return on investments and batteries are certainly uh, not a small um, investment up front. So uh, let's start with you, Nick. Yeah, I think um, a lot of them are, are motivated by the, the, the ROI at the end of the day. It does depend a little bit on, on the specifics of what you're talking about and, and which segment in the market. Um, but I think in general, um, our market is looking for an ROI and it's also looking to shore up its, its energy supply. So perhaps maybe not so much idealists as um, looking to to protect themselves a little bit and and ensure security of supply. Thank you, Nick. Um, so and there Ricardo, is just sorry, sorry, Maria. I was just going to ask Ricardo. <laughs> yes, me too. A... <laughs> exactly. Uh, Are you yeah, there, there, Ricardo? <laughs> okay. I'm here. Yes, very uh, good. Tell me. <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure if you caught the question about just if buyers of uh, of um, uh, storage uh, idealists or if they're purely about financial benefits and looking at the return on investment. Um, but, well, um, in Italy, we have this incentive is that uh, is giving you at least 50% of your investment back, okay, in 10 years from your tax uh, uh, deduction. So that I would say that probably is from five to seven years to get back the money that you back for the storage system. Then depends you know, from your consumption and uh, how how much you how you are due to use the, the energy. Okay, but I would say from five to eight years to get that money. Gotcha. Okay, so, Maria, sorry for cutting you off. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> yeah, so there is one on the battery chemistry maybe uh, Ali can answer. So uh, what uh, type of battery cells um, uh, is good to be using? And are the batteries certified uh, to UL9540A uh, and, or any other safety standards specific to the IMEA region? Hello? Yes, thank you for unmuting me. <laughs> Um, so we uh, we use the lithium iron phosphate, uh, which is a technology that has for stationary storage application the best trade-off between power, uh, capacity, safety, and uh, also density. So that's uh, that's the state of the art technologies on, on the mainstream market right now. So that's what the technology that we use. And uh, yes, in terms of, 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 of safety, um, the UL norm that uh, the audience referred to, this is an American norm. So our products for the US market um, comply to that. And for the European products, um, we follow the IEC norms for the safety side. And uh, we're also um, adding new specific safety norms and standards like the VDE standard for German products that will also come in the future. That's great to hear. Thank you, Ali. That answers okay. the question. Yeah. Yep. And, and we're just running out of time. So, uh, folks, I think that is a great place to leave it for today. 
Uh, we have plenty of thank yous we'd like to get in. Um, so we start, of course, with our audience for joining us today, joining in the conversation, participating in our polls. We really appreciate all of those contributions um, and it keeps the discussion lively, keeps our panelists on their toes, keeps the moderators busy. So thank you so much for that. And of course, a special thank you to our Goodby partners, Thomas and Ali, for initiating the session today, as well as uh, Jason Delonji, who couldn't quite join us, but uh, certainly uh, gave us some information beforehand to make sure we could present some module insights. Uh, and of course, thanks to our uh, distributor panelists today uh, across our regions. And Ricardo, next time we'll get you on for sure. No, no trouble. Uh, but thanks as well to, to Tobias, Nick, and Jerome. Um, thank you, of course, to our PV Magazine's event team who keep our webinars smooth or as best they can, um, keeping us uh, well uh, prepared, ensuring the whole show is a success. Maria. Thank you all from my side as well. It was a true pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, and uh, with that said, we have much more for you to enjoy. Uh, the March edition of PV Magazine is coming out this uh, week. We have just wrapped up the whole thing and set it off to the printers. And plenty of great new investigations into cell and module technology in this edition. Uh, we've gone with quite a strong focus on TopCon technology, uh, where there's several gigawatt of production coming online this year. And uh, put together a couple of articles on how we got to this point and uh, what still to be settled and standardized on those production lines. On the rooftop side as well, a great update from our editor-in-chief, Jonathan Gifford, on PV in Turkey, where big demand from the commercial sector is driving a comeback in installations this year. Uh, lots more in the magazine, of course. Uh, we've got uh, the latest on plans to establish PV manufacturing in Europe, in India, and some other regions as well. Lots of good stuff on power purchase agreements and unsubsidized PV in Europe. Europe as well, so don't miss out on those and much more in our March edition. Uh, take note of the subscription discount code you see there. Um, you can get a 10% discount with the webinar stand code and we do encourage you to use it. Quite right. Please do use it. Please read our magazine and uh, we, <laughs> Marie and I both write for it, so um, it's, it's very enjoyable. Um, and as you can see online as well, we also have fresh industry news uh, published. Um, you can see there are two of our most read articles over the last few days, um, from one from Emiliano Bellini about fully PV-driven systems to produce water, electricity, and crops, which sounds good to me. Um, and uh, there's one there from Vincent Shaw on Goodwe, um, and talking about global solar installations uh, possibly exceeding 240 gigawatt, gigawatts in 2022, which would be uh, tremendous given the uh, current uncertainty. Um, we also have quite a few webinars coming up. So uh, Wednesday, 16th of March, um, there's one there, Cutting Costs with Remote Commissioning, which is a, a utility sort of scale um, event. And then on the 30th of March, we have Bridging the Certainty Gap Through a New Partnership in Quality Assurance and Insurance. Two difficult words to say close together. So thanks to our webinar team for that. Um, I think that's just yeah, about it. That's just about it. One last thing, a survey will pop up uh, after the webinar, we'd appreciate your thoughts and feedback on how it all went. We do this for you, not for us. So any insights will go far. Absolutely. So thank you all. Thanks for watching uh, this webinar. And wherever you are in the world, I wish you a good day, a good evening, or good night. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks again and bye now. Till next time. Goodbye.